Hello everyone, Charles Watts here. It is Saturday, the sun is shining. Unfortunately, there's no Arsenal to look forward to this weekend because we are right slap bang in the middle, of course, of the international break. But despite all that, I am going to do another episode of Inside Arsenal for you today. And I hope wherever you're watching or listening to this around the world, you are having a great start to the weekend. Bits and pieces to discuss today. Obviously, as I said, right in the middle of that international break. So it's a little bit quiet on the Arsenal front, but plenty of Arsenal players in action, lots in action today, five of them in one game, in fact, potentially, as England take on Ukraine. So you've got Aaron Ramsdale, Bukayo Saka, uh, Declan Rice, and Eddie Nketiah, who I very nearly forgot, sorry, Eddie, uh, on one side, and Alexander Zinchenko, of course, on the other side. So plenty of Arsenal action to look forward to over the next 24 hours or so. Fingers crossed everyone comes back unscathed. Unfortunately, well... I'll start with the good points for Gabriel, shall we? Gabriel made his Brazil senior sort of full debut last night playing for them in their game against Bolivia. Uh, so congratulations to Gabriel. Very, very well deserved. Of course, how it's taken him this long to get a call up, I will have no idea given his performances. So that's really great news and a proud moment for him. But for Arsenal, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can see what I've just brought up on screen. There is a slight concern to come from this because he did go off with some sort of an injury by the looks of it. You can see the picture on the screen right now with an ice pack on his upper thigh after being substituted. And as Carlo Guna says there in the comments, as hi, Charles, Gabriel went off injured during his Brazil debut last night. Hopefully it's not too bad as he was able to walk off the field, fingers crossed, over the next few days. Yes, exactly that. Fingers crossed indeed. I think we're all... Desperately hoping this is going to be nothing too serious. I didn't see the game, obviously. So there was talk that he took a bit of a clattering at one point during the match. Um, so whether it's a contact injury or a muscle injury, that's all going to come out over the next few days, I imagine. I'm sure we'll probably get some sort of update from the Brazil camp leading up to their second game of the international break in a few days' time with Gabriel. So it's a shame from him in one way because he's made his debut and it's his really big moment, something he'd have been looking forward to for a long time. And then, of course, he goes off injured. And if you've got your Arsenal hat on, hat on rather than your Brazil hat on, then obviously it's a big, big concern, Gabriel coming into the team in that game against Manchester United before the international break and putting in a fantastic performance alongside William Saliba at centre-back. And, yeah, you were kind of hoping that was going to be the kickstart of Gabriel's season, having spent the first few days, on, first few games on the bench. The last thing you want now is Gabriel picking up some sort of problem and missing some time when he comes back to Arsenal. Now, of course, that's all hypothetical at the moment. We'll have to wait and see, but fingers crossed this isn't the worst of injuries. Gabriel Jesus did come on, but only for a minute. <laughs> Came on in the 89th minute, I think it was. Uh, so, you know, he's fine. Nothing happened to him. You do wonder if he only goes on for a minute. What was the point in calling him up in the first place and dragging him all the way across South America? But, you know, it's Brazil's prerogative, of course, and Gabriel Jesus would have been happy to get that call up. Gabriel Martinelli was an unused substitute in the game, so he didn't feature whether he gets some minutes and Gabriel Jesus gets some more minutes in the second game. We'll have to wait and see, you know, record-breaking night for Neymar in that game. I think it was 5-1, wasn't it? He scored twice um, and became Brazil's all-time record goal scorer. So a big night for Neymar, a very big night for Gabriel as well, making his debut. And we can all just sit here hoping that, that there is nothing too serious because, yeah, as I said, you kind of hope that Manchester United game was the kickstart for Gabriel's season. And we're going to see him back with William Saliba pretty much every week now, being able to form that partnership that was so influential for Arsenal last season and for whatever reason Mikel Arteta decided not to go with open over the three games opening three games at the campaign he's back now the, importantly as well the Saudi transfer window is shut so all that stuff that was going on behind the scenes with Saudi interest in Gabriel you know has ended there's nothing like that to sort of be playing on anyone's minds at the moment so I'm hoping if he comes back and this injury is nothing serious and he's just going to be established back into that centre-back partnership alongside William Sleeper and Arsenal can really kick on from there. OK, we're still waiting for official confirmation from Arsenal about Nicolas Pepe. He's, we know he's gone over to Traps and Spory for over a couple of days ago. We saw the pictures of him in the private plane heading over there. He even gave an interview. Well, he gave a bit of a speech to the camera that Traps and Spore put on their social media accounts. Now, Nicholas Pepe himself last night has tweeted these pictures. That if you're watching on YouTube, you can see on the screen right now of him appearing to sign the contract. He's certainly sitting there posing with a pen, signing something with his uh, thumb up. Um, and then he posted a little message as well, which the English of it says, very happy to arrive in this country of football. New challenge for me. 
looking forward to getting back on the pitch and with the team bringing Trabzonspor to the top of the league. So basically confirming his move, showing the picture of him signing the contract, announcing why he's come to Trabzonspor. And yet we've still heard nothing from Arsenal about um, exactly what's gone on with Nicolas Pepe. And, you know, I'm sure it will come at some point. It's not happened yet. Um, as far as I, I don't think they're going to get any money for Nicolas Pepe. And I've seen, I've seen some stuff. I spoke about it yesterday on, um, you know, some reports they were going to get a nominal fee. I'm from, I'm still not sure that's the case. We'll have to wait and see what Arsenal say, but I'm still at the moment. What I've heard is that it doesn't look like they're going to be getting any money for Nicolas Pepe and it is going to be a contract termination, but I don't know that for certain. So we'll have to wait and see um, as, a, as this thing progresses, but whatever happens, He's definitely gone and he's he's going to be out the door at Arsenal. There's been lots and lots of comments and I've been pretty amazed how pretty much every comment about Nicolas Pepe on my <laughs> under yesterday's video, somehow most people have managed to get Kai Havertz into it. I just don't get the whole Kai Havertz thing. It's just, it's, it's like too much almost at the moment. Everything seems to get in turned around to Kai Havertz. I just don't understand how Nicolas Pepe's situation can be turned around to Kai Havertz and so I didn't put any of those comments in here because I just think it's I just don't get it I just it's like just yeah Kai Havertz isn't doing great he's not hit the ground running yet it's annoying I know we want him to do better hopefully he does better but I don't get how every comment every t discussion point has to turn to Kai Havertz I don't, I don't get what Nicolas Pepe's got to do with him it's a completely different situation um and everyone's saying oh why is he giving Mikel giving Kai Havertz so many chances didn't give Nicolas Pepe Charlie Kai Havertz has played four games. Nicolas Pepe played a season and a half under Arteta, so it's not like he didn't get a chance. He played plenty under Mikel Arteta. Kai Havertz has played four games, so I don't, I don't get that comparison. Anyway, uh, here's one from Ian Randall. It says, I, for one, wish that Pepe had more opportunities to shine. My standout memory of his time of us will always be the incredible contribution he made coming off the bench against Wolves to turn that game around, composed finish, an unbelievable turn for the first and a lovely assist for Lacquer's winner. Wish him all the best in Turkey. Yeah, that was such a fantastic night. It was a brilliant night for Nicolas Pepe as well. I loved that win, the celebrations afterwards. You know, that was a really good, a really special night, that one. It, I think there was that little bit of a rivalry sort of creeping out with Arsenal and Wolves, wasn't there? Arsenal had gone to Wolves and won a couple of weeks earlier. Wolves had kicked off about the celebrations. They were annoyed at how much Arsenal celebrated that win. They came to the Emirates, got a goal, and then were hanging on for that 1-0 lead despite non-stop pressure. Then Arteta sent it on Pepe, and it was brilliant. The first goal, the equaliser from Pepe from Nketiah's pass. Lovely turn, great finish. And then he set up the... The winner for Lacazette, although he went down as an own goal, of course, after the deflection. But, you know, that was a really good moment for Pepe. And, you know, again, it just showed what he could do and the quality he has. And lots of you, again, in the comments yesterday were saying he is just, he has been a flop. Just call him a flop, Charles. And look, for his price, he has been a flop. Of course he is. He's been nothing like a 72 million pound player. So in that regard, he's a flop. But I still think when you actually look at what he did when he was playing for Arsenal, you know, he contributed a lot. But, um, I think, as someone said yesterday, you know, if he cost thirty million pounds, would you call it? Would he? Would he be called a flop? And I don't think he would have done. I think his record during his time when he was playing at Arsenal, if he was a thirty million pound player or a twenty-five million pound player, you'd look at it and think, yeah, that was all right. That wasn't too bad. It was just the fact of, of course, seventy-two million pounds. And here's one from um, Jocelyn Brown it says Saka's talent killed Pepe's career. And yeah, you know, that's a big, a big point as well. You know, would he have? fallen out of favour just so quite so much if Saka wasn't playing on the right and just such a guaranteed starter on the right-hand side. And, you know, that worked against Pepe a lot, I think. Obviously, he was brought into the club. A, a, he was brought into a club and he wasn't wanted by the manager. You know, obviously, you know, Emery didn't want Nicolas Pepe. He wanted Wilfred Zaha, but Arsenal went out and signed Pepe anyway. Ralph Sinier, he signed Pepe anyway and sort of dumped him on Unai Emery. And, you know, obviously, Unai played him. And but it wasn't a manager, he it wasn't a player that the manager wanted. And then pretty soon after Pepe was signed, the, the people who did sign him, as as in you know, Ralph Senyehi and um Hus Farmi and people like that, they all left. And so suddenly he was there. There was a new manager in Arteta who came in pretty soon. All the people who were at the club who actually signed him and worked hard to sign him went as well. And he was kind of left and he was there and timing sort of worked against him as well. And you had Bukaya Saka on top of that emerging and becoming this absolute super talent that played every single week. So there's lots of things that worked against Nicolas Pepe as well, you know, um, to stop him you know, sort of building on what was a fairly promising start to his Arsenal career. But look, he's gone now. It didn't work out for the money, but, you know, he still contributed quite big moments for Arsenal. I still don't think, you know, Arsenal, he was so key to winning that FA Cup. And uh, that shouldn't be forgotten. And then there was moments like this one for me. And of course, talked about that game against Wolves. So yes, he didn't live up to the money. Yes, he didn't live up to the hype. It was a poor signing at the end of the day. 
but you know he had some good moments and good luck to him at Trabzon Spor. I hope he goes over there and really smashes it and gets his career going again. A uh, big night for Arsenal. Well, big day, afternoon even for Arsenal women today in the uh, Champions League against Paris FC in the second qualifying round um, for them as they st- try to aim towards getting to the group stages for a second succeed, uh, season in a row. Obviously, got the 3-0 win at the weekend, Jonas Arnival's team, and uh, fingers crossed they can kick on today. If you're in the UK or Ireland, you can watch that game. It's been streamed on the Arsenal app. It's about 2, I think it's one fifty-five kickoff or 2pm kickoff, uh, so you will be able to watch that. Um, Jonas has been speaking ahead of the game, says Paris is a very strong team and they're very strong on the counter-attack. We've seen them play a number of training matches here during the pre-season. They've been playing against international opposition like Ajax and Anderlecht, so it's clear, clear to see that they are prepared for this stage of the competition. We expect a tough game. We know we need to be at our best. We plan to be that way. It's a big game for Arsenal. It was a good 3-0 win. They sort of dusted off the cobwebs with the 3-0 win at the weekend. We saw a lot of the new girls get their debut as well, including Alicia Russo, obviously the big a uh, high-profile signing of the summer for Arsenal, and hopefully they can build on that today, get the win against Paris, and uh, continue getting closer and closer towards the group stages of the Champions League, which they obviously had such a great run in last season, and fingers crossed they can qualify for the group stages and have another good run again. So good luck to the women later on. Don't forget, you can watch that game if you want to on the app from about one fifty-five this afternoon. Okay, um, here's one, actually. I should, probably should have brought this one up when I was talking about Pepe earlier and um, said, Charles, if we bought Pepe 35 million, would he be considered a flop? I've actually answered this in my spiel earlier on, didn't I? Um, yeah, I think 35 million, probably still a little bit too much, but I think you sort of take 10 million off that. If he was a 25 million pound player and you think you look at what he achieved during those first two years at Arsenal, probably wouldn't have been called a flop. No, I think he would have, you know, I don't think he would be looked at as a spectacular signing by any means. I think it's clear for us all to see that, you know, Nicolas Pepe had quite a few deficiencies in his game and I'm not sure he's a top-level player. I think he's a good player, but the fact, you know, he's gone to Trabzonspor and no top club has come in for him, you know, it doesn't surprise me at all because he's pretty one-dimensional and I think when you get to the very top level, you can get exposed when you're, when you're like that and it's no surprise to me that he's he's not had top clubs going for him and he's ended up going to Trabzonspor. That's not to say they're not a good club. They are a good club in Turkish leagues a decent league an exciting league and you know they've got some pretty high profile players there so it's a good move for him but um yeah in answer to your question i think 35 million would still be a lot i think sort of yeah maybe 25 million or so and he wouldn't quite be considered a a flop but still not the greatest of signings here's one from the limey 351 says i can't agree with you on the martinez leno debacle charles martinez has been fantastic had, had been fantastic at the end of the previous season a blind man should have been able to see that he had the right to start as number one the following season. Leno was like a vampire with crosses and needed to be replaced. The truth is, just like just like Havertz, uh, and dropping a Gabriel to play party as an inverted fullback, Arteta's judgment is hit and miss and frequently very wrong. I just don't get it. I honestly, I don't know why Havertz again has been brought into that. Um, and and also, I think that's really harsh on Leno. I think last season, Leno was a better goalkeeper than Martinez. Obviously, Martinez won the World Cup, which uh, was very, very good. And he was great in that tournament. But I think in the Premier League last season, Leno, I'm not sure there was a better goalkeeper than Leno almost last season. He was brilliant for Fulham. And it just made that s- how much Arsenal sold him to as an absolute nightmare. Awful deal for Arsenal. And he's been great, Bernd Leno, for, for Fulham. And I don't think Martinez has been f- that good for Aston Villa by any means. So, um yeah, I'm not. Sure. I don't really agree with that. Everyone's got their own opinions, um, but yeah, I'm not sure why Havertz needs to get brought into that again. It's almost like, just leave Havertz alone for a bit. Come on, guys, leave him alone for a little bit. Um, I want him to do well. Trust me. I know he's not doing great at the moment, but I don't think I don't think every single conversation about every single player somehow needs to get turned around to to Kai Havertz. It's just a, it's just a little bit too much, I think. Um, and yeah, look, I didn't like the party inverted fullback idea, but. Hey, it happened. And Mikel Arteta as a manager, he get he gets a choice of these things. I'm glad it seems to be over for now, especially with party injured. So that's going to be over for now, and hopefully we won't see it again when he comes back fit. But again, you know, it's, it's the manager's decision at the end of the day. We don't all, man, fans don't always agree with what the manager has to do. And that's about it for today. Bit of a short one, only at the 15 minute mark. So I'm sure plenty of you will be happy with that because I keep getting comments saying your, your videos are too long. So it's kind of trying to find this balance in that. So a lot of people prefer them being a little bit longer and some people don't prefer them being a little bit longer. So uh, so yeah, still trying to get a bit of a balancing act from it. But look, wherever you're watching this around the world, I hope you have a fantastic uh, Saturday. 
And uh, yeah, if you're going to watch the Arsenal women today, you can do, as I said, on the Arsenal app from about 2 p.m. onwards. England, Ukraine to what look forward to today. Germany playing. Hopefully Kai Havertz can score in that game or do something, get a little bit of confidence ahead of his return to Arsenal. And uh, yeah, fingers crossed we get some good news coming out of Brazil regarding that injury uh, scare, shall we say, to Gabriel. Uh, right, everyone, have a very good day. I'm off now. My, my daughter's nightmare birthday party in about an hour's time after watching big, all her, her and all her mates in doing a big gymnastics uh, party for the next couple of hours. So that's going to be stressful. But anyway, have a great day, everyone. I'll speak to you very, very soon. Uh-huh.